The castle, which once bustled with ponies going about their work, now stood silently in the gem quarries outside Ponyville. Wind whistled through the empty halls, flitted through the windows, and at times made it sound like the old castle was singing some sad, lonesome, wordless chorus in an attempt to draw back the ponies that had once given it purpose. Only one soul remained within its stone walls, a single resident who continued to haunt the halls like a restless spirit. At the moment, Nightmare Moon sat still on her throne, like a statue, looking out across the empty throne room. It had been one week of silence and solitude, one week since she had freed the children of Nightmare and removed the cursed blessing that Nexus had infected them with, one week where she had barely tended to her own needs. She had eaten and slept, but had done little else. Her coat needed washing, her eye shadow had faded and needed to be reapplied, and her armor had grown dull with its, uh, its usual polish. A chiming clock in the distant hall alerted Nightmare Moon of the hour, and without moving hoof or feather, she called on her magic. Her horn glowed, and her sky began to mark the age-old progression of night to day. The moon set, the sky lightened, the stars faded, and the sun began to fly to the heavens. The sun's light filtered in through the broken windows to fall on Nightmare Moon's coat, and its warmth filled the throne room. A beautiful day was drawing over Equestria, and the Nightmare Moon took little notice of it. She was numb to the world, trapped in her own mind. Shutting her eyes, Nightmare Moon thought back to the moment when she had done the deed she had done. She had gathered all the children of Nightmare in her castle courtyard, even Spell Nexus. All the worst of his infection had been destroyed. Enough still lingered to make him like any other cultist. Blindly obedient and loving, still his continued loyalty had served a purpose. She had him gather all the others, and when she was sure every cultist had blessed, every pony was accounted for, she acted to remove the blessing. She spoke to them, told them that they were going to receive a blessing like they had all never felt before, and... Once they closed their eyes, she let her mane engulf them. She put them to sleep, just as she had done to spell Nexus. Then once they were no longer conscious, she let her mane face to their bodies to attack their infections. It had taken time, but she removed every blessing. Some infections were worse than others, and some infections fought back. In the end, however, she freed every pony. Afterwards, she ended the spell she had done to keep them all asleep. In the time thereafter, they all just lay there as if dead. Then some began to rise, to open their eyes and look around. Nightmare Moon had smiled at the first signs of movement. The ocean of turquoise that had looked at her before was now a rainbow of colors. Browns and yellows, pinks, blues, greens, grays, ambers and magentas. But no other eyes matched hers. She alone had turquoise irises. The children of Nightmare were bewildered. Some didn't know where they were or how they had gotten there. But their memories began to flow back. One by one, they remembered, and soon they were all staring at her, fear and resentment dancing in their eyes. Nightmare Moon met those glasses for a time, but then she turned her back on the crowd and offered a few words with a voice that was strong, but not threatening. I have returned to you your freedom. Those who wish to stay may stay and those who wish to leave may leave. I will hold no ill will against those who want to go back to their friends and family. After her proclamation, Nightmare Moon had used her magic to open the castle gates. She then just sat there and listened. She began to hear hooves moving against the ground and wings flapping in the air. She heard the sounds of ponies leaving, not just a few at the time, but in droves. She sat and listened, until they all were silent again. And only then did Nightmare Moon dare to see who had remained. As she was expected, there was no pony left. Not a soul had remained. But what sensible pony would want to serve a tyrant and a monster? It all ended with Nightmare Moon turning to the one pony who had remained. The one pony who had been witness to what she had done. She had summoned the mayor of Ponyville to the castle. And now that she had freed the children of Nightmare... She gave the mayor a written message, instructions on what was to be done with it. 
After that, Nightmare Moon slipped into her now empty castle and shut the doors behind her. It was just another painful memory to join Nightmare Moon's growing collection. She felt a single tear stream down her cheek as she cracked her eyes open, looking across the room at the empty gaze. She had been such a foal. Even if she would forever be remembered as Nightmare Moon, she was done. She would no longer be queen and would only serve Equestria as the one who raised and lowered the sun and moon. She would be better if she just released the royal sisters and resigned herself to their judgment. Equestria would be better off with the sisters back and her gone. For all she had done, Nightmare Moon knew what she deserved. She deserved to be sent to the moon, perhaps to never be free again. On more than one occasion, she had begun to undo the spells that held Celestia and Luna captive. She had tried to free them. She had tried to find the courage to accept the consequences of what she had done. She tried to fix her last remaining mistake. But she couldn't do it. She had been trapped within the moon for a thousand years. Trapped in cold loneliness. When the sisters were free, they would banish her to the moon once more. But this time it would be so much worse. She would not have watched wanted her hatred to distract her, and the chill of solitude would sting far worse. Her happy memories, which carried with them warmth and laughter, would burn like salt on an open wound. They would taunt her with the life she so foolishly throwed away. The worst part was that, if she was ever to be able to return from the moon, she would return to the world where no pony knew her except the royal sisters. She would never be able to see her friends again, never again be able to embrace Twilight. She would be alone, and she would be hated. Maybe that's what she deserved. But she didn't want to go back to the moon. Nightmare Moon, ruminated in her own weakness, only to be drawn out of the vicious cycle of emotions and thoughts. Her keen hearing picked up distant hoofsteps, a single echoing sound amid the castle's plainful silence. They were drawing closer, and from the sound of the hoofsteps, it sounded like the pony was running. Nightmare Moon did not linger to meet the pony. Instead, she became a cloud and drifted up to the ceiling. She had amongst the glittering gems that elegantly depicted the nighttime sky and waited for the pony she expected to see. Every morning, since the children of Nightmare had been freed, while that sparkle had come to the castle, she would call out for Nyx and wander the halls for hours. She would only give up in the early afternoon or when her stomach was forcing a retreat back to Ponyville. Nightmare Moon yearned to answer Twilight's calls, but her guilt was too great. She could not face Twilight, not when it was her magic that was keeping Celestia and Luna trapped in the moon and sun. It was better if Twilight just forgot about her, and that is why Nightmare Moon hid. Twilight was searching for Nyx, but Nightmare Moon knew there was no Nyx to be found. The hinges of the throne room doors cracked as they opened, and the sound of hoofsteps echoed against the interior of the throne room. Nightmare Moon expected it to be the previous mornings. While it would arrive and start calling out her name, yet when the owner of the hoofsteps called out, it wasn't Twilight's voice Nightmare Moon heard. It was far different. A smoother voice that spoke in rhyme. When Nightmare Moon dared to look, she saw it was no pony who had come to look for her, but instead a zebra. Where in these halls do you hide, Nightmare Moon? Zakora shouted. I must speak to you about impending doom. Nightmare Moon debated answering Zakora's call for a moment. Twilight might have become sneakier and sent another pony in her place. Zakora, however, seemed honestly worried. So Nightmare Moon called on a little spell that would make it seem like her voice was coming from everywhere in the room at the same time. And that way Zakora wouldn't know where she was hiding. What is it? Restlessness grows in the forest of Everfree. The monsters are moving amongst its trees. Their hungry bellies groan and grumble. They march this way, making the ground rumble. I was forced to flee in their advance, but I fear Ponyville has no chance. The monsters are leaving the Everfree forest? Nitra Moon echoed, making sure she had understood Zakora's rhymes. And that is what I say. It is the utter truth. The beasts come to sate their pony sweet tooth. Realizing that Zakora was dead serious about the threat, Nightmare Moon rematerialized her normal body right where she was in the air. She dropped down, landing with a thud against the throne room floor. Zakora jumped but recovered quickly from Nightmare Moon's sudden appearance. 
Why would they leave the Everfree now? Magma Moon asked. The monsters remained amongst the trees in fear, hidden from the princesses of day Celestia's sphere. But now Celestia has been away for too long. The lingering scent of her magic is no longer strong. The monsters see their chance now that she is gone. They seek to rampage with their hunger and brawn. Nightmare Moon lowered her gaze, cursing herself quietly. Just another thing she had done to cause pain to the ponies. Equestria would have been better off if she had never been resurrected. It would be safe, and she wouldn't have to deal with the painful guilt that twisted in her chest. I am sorry. It is my fault. I did not come to watch you wallow, Nightmare Moon, nor to pour verbal salt in your still fresh wounds. Zakora said firmly. I came here to speak and to persuade, to ask our once dark queen for her aid. Nightmare Moon turned away from Zakora and began to walk back to her throne. What do you expect me to do? I'm Nightmare Moon. I don't fight against monsters. I am one. Zakora ran around to Nightmare Moon's side. Despite the difference in stature, Zakora stood firm and spoke with a scolding tone. You are a crying child, and that is putting it mild. Nightmare Moon arched her head back like she had just been slapped in the face. Did Zakora just call her a crybaby? Nightmare Moon wasn't sure, but she furrowed her eyebrows all the same. Do I look like a filly to you? You can say nay all day, and can protest what I say, but you act like a filly who wet the bed. You have done everything to hide your head. You brought back the sun and freed your cult. But that does not make you an adult. You keep the royal sisters locked away to avoid the punishment for stealing the day. Celestia and Luna should have released before Ponyville was beset by a horde of beasts. Have you ever been sealed to the moon? Nightmare Moon asked, her voice rising to a shout. All you can do is watch the world spin in cold solitude. You are taunted by the glow of cities where ponies have light, warm beds, and the company of others. You are trapped. And if you ever return, any ponies you care about are dead and buried. I won't go back. If you will not be dissuaded from this, Zakora said, pointing a hoof at Nightmare Moon, then you must save us from Death's Kiss. I... I can't. I'm just. You are not hurt, and you are not ill. You suffer neither from fever nor chill. You are an alicorn and have a mortal power. In your presence it should be the beasts who flee and cower. You are the dreaded Nightmare Moon. With rage alone you beat back a monsoon. You usurped the throne for your own. Now you must defend your home. But if you don't, Ponyville will have a grim fate. Even Twilight will be food upon an earthen plate. Mention of Twilight being in danger lit a flare in, of rage in Nightmare Moon's chest. These monsters believed that with Celestia gone, they could turn Equestria into a buffet. Was she not also some pony to be equally as feared, if not more so? Had she not been the one to defeat Celestia? And these monsters, they threatened the ponies she cared about. They threatened her friends. They threatened Twilight. And she wouldn't let anything, be it monster or pony, hurt those she cared about. Not again. How close are they? Nightmare Moon asked. She strode towards the throne room door, forcing Zakora to gallop to keep up. Do not doubt that they draw near. I may already be too late. It's a Hydra! Every pony run for your lives! My daughter! Where's my daughter? Hurry! Hurry! Don't let it catch you! Nightmare Moon took flight from the castle with Zakora holding tightly onto her back as she soared skywards. From the high vantage point, she was able to assess the situation. A hydra had reached the edge of town and was starting a rampage. It snapped at ponies who were currently panicking in the streets and crushed anything that stood in its path. No other beasts from the Everfree had reached Ponyville yet. But Nightmare Moon could see at least two more hydras moving along the trees towards the town. The multi-headed monstrosities were infamous for enjoying the taste of ponies. Having seen all she needed to see, Nightmare Moon folded her wings and dropped out of the sky like an attacking hawk. She plummeted, 
waiting until the last moment before she spread her wings again. She slowed herself down enough that she landed with a firm thud against the stone of Ponyville's streets, though she remained on her hooves and unhurt. Get as many ponies to the castle as you can. It's the safest place right now, Nightmoon told Sakura as she kept her eyes focused on the Hydra in the distance. I will direct all that I can and ask him to pass the word to the castle of all Ponyville will be spurred. Zakora replied. She jumped down from Nightmare Moon's back before starting to shout at any pony who would listen. In but a few moments, the flow of panicking crowds was redirected. The populace of the town raced towards the protective embrace of Nightmare Moon's castle. As Zakora began the rough evacuation, Nightmare Moon took flight again. She surged towards the Hydra. Three of the monstrosities, four heads were snapping at ponies running through the streets. One had a head, however, had some pony cornered in an alleyway, a gray pegasus and a purplish filly unicorn, both with straw blonde manes. Ditsy Doo was doing her best to shield her daughter, Dinky, from the huge hydra head that was licking its lips mere feet in front of her. Ditsy Doo would have normally flown away and carried her daughter to safety, but one of her wings was ruffled, a sign that she had injured it. The injury was not bad enough that she couldn't fly, but flying quickly was out of the question. She wouldn't be able to pick up Dinky and get away from the monster before it snapped its jaw down on them. The Hydra head moved a little closer, grinning at the first pony meal of the day. Ditsy Doo took an anxious step back, but otherwise held her ground. She had her wings spread and her body lowered. She was trying to look as strong as possible. A natural defensive instinct, even though she had no chance of scaring the monster away. Licking its lips one final time, the Hydra decided it had waited long enough. It brought its head back, the muscles in its neck coiling and tensing as it opened its jaw wide. It was a mere seconds from striking out, from enjoying the taste of a pony for the first time ever. Yet before it could attack, something dropped on the Hydra's head, smashing its jaw to the ground. The thing that had landed on top of the Hydra was Nightmare Moon. She had dropped out of the sky like an anvil using her own weight and momentum to smash the Hydra's jaw to the ground. It was, at best, a small diversion, but that was all that she needed. In a single fluid motion, Nightmare Moon took flight again, as her mane stretched out to pick up Dinky and Ditsy. With the mare and Philly safely in the embrace of her magic, Nightmare Moon sides soared skyward, and then, when at a relatively safe distance, set the two back down. Are you okay? Nightmare Moon asked as she glanced over her shoulder, leveling off. Yes, we're... we're fine. Dizzy replied through the tears in her misaligned eyes while she smiled and hugged Dinky tightly. Can you fly and carry her? Dizzy Doo nodded. Yes. Then go with every pony else and fly to the castle. It's the safest place right now. After quickly picking Dinky Doo up in her legs... Ditsy took off from Nightmare Moon's back. The pair flew a bit before Ditsy turned back to look and offer a thank you to Nightmare Moon. She, however, looked back just in time to see the Hydra below stretching out one of its heads. In a swift, single motion, it snapped its jaw around Nightmare Moon, swallowing her whole. Ditsy froze in midair, not wanting to believe what she had just seen. The Hydra head that had eaten Nightmare Moon was smiling stupidly licking its lips as it enjoyed the lingering taste in its mouth. The other heads glared at the first with fiery jealousy, obviously wishing they had gotten to enjoy the rare delicacy. Yet after a few moments, all four heads of the Hydra stood up straight, nauseated expressions forming on their faces, and each head let out a short burp. With each belch, a cloud of indigo, star-speckled smoke appeared. The four clouds, once free of the Hydra's mouths, quickly flew away, swirled together and rematerialized into Nightmare Moon. Nightmare Moon looked down at the Hydra with a cold, merciless glare, and her voice seethed out anger. Did you just try to eat me? The Hydra backed up nervously and whined, its four heads looking at one another, debating the hasty retreat. Nightmare Moon, however, didn't give it a chance to escape unscathed. Her eyes flashed to life, and, from her mane, bolts of lightning surged out in rapid succession. They struck the ground around the Hydra's feet, and the monster quickly began to jump around, trying to keep its toes from being shocked. 
This lasted for a few seconds before the Hydra turned and fled in the direction of every forest. Still, Nightmare Moon was not satisfied until she sent one final bolt of lightning shooting in the air to strike the Hydra on the base of its tail, causing it to yelp. Zitsy Doo almost didn't dare to approach Nightmare Moon after that. The display of power made her want to just turn tail and flee with her daughter. Despite this, she dared to fly closer and ask, y Your Highness? You don't have to call me that, Nightmare Moon said as she turned to face Ditsy Doo. I am not your queen anymore. Now, are you okay? We're fine, Ditsy said, though she couldn't help but hold her daughter tighter. What about you? The hydrate you like you're a bite sized muffin. I'm fine, Nightmare Moon assured her. Now, you need to head to the castle. It's the only safe place right now. Not wanting to argue, Ditsy Doo bowed respectfully and turned to leave. Dinky Doo offered a small thank you. She twisted around in her mother's leg so she could smile and wave. A small gesture brought a smile to Nightmare Moon's face, but she couldn't help but wave back. It was a short-lived moment. The sound of crashing trees and wood drew Nightmare Moon's attention back to the task at hoof. In the time Nightmare Moon spent fighting the first Hydra, the rest of the creatures that were coming out of the Everfree Forest had reached Ponyville. There were Hydras, Cerberi, Scorpions, but the worst that Nightmare Moon could see were the Lupus Miners racing through the streets of Ponyville. Horse feathers. There are too many to fight at one time. Nightmare Moon cursed herself. She flapped her wings and began to circle above Ponyville to assess the situation. She could easily handle any of the monsters one on one, with the full extent of her magic. But while she was fighting one, the other monsters would have free reign to attack, injure, and eat other ponies. If she was going to save as many ponies as possible, she'd need to fight all monsters at once. She would need to draw their attention away, so the residents of Ponyville could flee. But she couldn't be in that many places at once. Or could she? For a moment, Nightmare Moon remembered how she had infiltrated Celestia's castle, how she'd become a whole group of soldiers. She could divide herself, divide her magic, Based on every monster at the same time. It would let her protect the most ponies. Yet there was danger to it. The more Nightmare Moon divided herself, the more vulnerable she would be. Her strength, resilience, and immortality were caused by the sheer amount of magic she, as a full-blooded holocorn, could contain. It meant that more than enough magic to divide herself. But the more she divided herself, the weaker and more vulnerable each piece would be. It would not only put her at a great disadvantage against the monsters, but if the clones got too badly hurt, or if too many of them fell, she could easily herself. For a moment, Nightmare Moon hesitated. She wondered if it really was smart to take, make herself that vulnerable. Her ears continued to pick up on the panicked screams and sounds of destruction. The ponies. They needed her help. She made up her mind. Shutting her eyes, Nightmare Moon called on her magic, drawing it to its peak. She then began the quick but delicate process of subdividing her magic, and thus, herself. Come on! This way! Rainbow Dash called out. She waved a hoof as she led a group of panicked ponies through Ponyville. The group followed the instructions to a T, rounding a corner and continuing their panicked gallop to the center of town. A few more directions from Rainbow Dash and the group of ponies was running up the road to the castle. Dash watched the group for a few moments to make sure they weren't going to be any stragglers before she looped around and flew to the town hall. Soon after Sakura had been dropped off by Nightmare Moon, she'd met up with Twilight, who immediately took it upon herself to organize the evacuation of Ponyville. Twilight called on her friends for help as she saw them. The six ponies and one zebra were now doing everything they could to ensure every pony got out safely. Rainbow Dash landed beside Twilight, who was currently looking over a table. On it was a map of Ponyville along with several lists. Twilight was holding on one of the lists magically, using a pencil to check something off, as Rainbow Dash said. Okay. I found every pony up at Horseshoe Street and got him out. What's next? I need a fresh scouting report, Twilight said without looking up from her work, much like a field general commanding her troops. Fly up and see where all the monsters are, so we can see what streets we need to clear next. Rainbow Dash snapped her hoof up in a momentary salute before zipping skyward. With her trademark speed, she was soon high above the town and looking across the panic-stricken Ponyville. She began taking quick mental notes of where the monsters were. 
It was a bad situation. The two Hydra still hadn't gotten too deep into town, the other monsters were starting to spread into areas that hadn't been evacuated. Rainbow Dash saw one Cerberus getting close to the clinic where Applejack and Rarity were working to help evacuate the patients. The three-headed, black-furred, red-eyed, size-of-an-elephant dog lumbered through the streets, sniffing at the ground, following the thick scent of ponies. But Cerberus wasn't alone. There were other three-headed dogs on the prowl around town, and they were spreading quickly. Not only that, there were scorpions, too. Like the Ursa Minor, the scorpions were constellation beasts, magical in nature, and obscenely huge. The key difference was, while the Ursa Minor was bear-like, the scorpions were like scorpions, and they had a preference for having ponies for breakfast. The Scorpios were crawling across the Ponyville buildings, using their claws and tails to try and strike at the ponies who still lingered in the streets while smashing anything in their way. However, the most frightening things attacking the town were the Lupus Miners, Constellation Wolves. They weren't big monsters. A Lupus Miner was about the size of an average pony. What they lacked in size, however, they made up for in ferocity and speed. While the average pony was able to outrun or outmaneuver the larger monsters, the Lupus Miners had the speed and skill to chase down their prey. And that was what one Lupus Miner was about to do. Rainbow Dash saw two little fillies galloping as fast as their hooves could take them away from a pursuing Lupus Miner. The fillies had about a two-block lead on it, but due to their small size and short legs, the Constellation Wolf was catching up quickly. Dash didn't hesitate for a moment. She flew down to intercept the monster. It was a deadly race, but one Rainbow Dash was sure she could win. Just as the Lupus Miner managed to catch up to the fillies, she soared in, tackled the beast, and sent it bouncing down the street while she rolled once and jumped back to her hooves. She skidded to a stop, finishing off the move with what have made the Wonder Belts proud. As the wolf reeled from the sudden sky attack, Rainbow Dash chanced a glance over her shoulder, looking at the two fillies. It was a familiar pair, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. You two need to get out of here. Now! Dash snapped before turning her gaze forward again so she could keep an eye on the lupus minor as it recovered. Come on, Silver Spoon! We gotta go! Diamond Tiara stressed. She was trying to pull her friend off the ground. Silver Spoon, however, wouldn't budge. She was too scared. She had dropped down on her stomach, covered her eyes with her hooves, and started to cry for her mother. Seriously? You two have to go! Dash yelled, taking a few anxious steps back. The lupus minor was back on his paws, and creeping slowly towards the three ponies. It licked its lips and kept its eyes focused on them. Dash, however, lowered herself down and spread her wings, meeting the beast's hungry stare while placing herself between it and the fillies. The beast growled as it prepared to pounce. Rainbow snorted and parted the pot of the ground defiantly, like a bull ready to charge. The pair glared each other down for a time, each waiting for the other to make a move before Rainbow Dash finally shouted, are y'all barking no bite or what? The beast took Dash's taunt and pounced with claws and teeth bared. The constellation wolf, however, soon found itself the victim of another skybound attack. A figure plowed into the wolf's side, and both it and the wolf zipped across the street before crashing into a nearby market cart like a wrecking ball. Rainbow Dash, Silver Spoon, and Diamond Tiara watched anxiously to see what had just saved them, only for the wolf to climb out of the wreckage first. It shook itself, tossing a few shreds of wood that lingered on its coat before turning its focus back to them. That proved to be a mistake. While the wolf's attention was on them, a smoky, star-sparkled mare reached out of the wrecked cart and grabbed the lupus by the hind leg. The lupus miner was then promptly flung down the street, its starry body crashing into the cart full of hay. At the same time, another figure pulled itself out of the wreckage of the cart near Rainbow Dash. Nightmare Moon winced as she folded her wings. She moved towards the center of the street and positioned herself in front of Rainbow Dash. Get them out of here, she ordered while keeping her eyes focused on the far end of the street. The lupus miner was crawling out of the hay wagon, and after growling, it began charging down the street again. Now! Nightmare Moon snapped as she unfurled her wings and stood to meet the Constellation Wolf's charge. Dash's bewilderment ended with Nightmare Moon's shout. 
She scooped up the fillies, carrying Silver Spoon on her back and holding Diamond Tiara in her front hooves as she flew skyward. She kept flying until she was sure she was at a safe distance. Only then did Rainbow Dash look back. What Dash saw was almost made her drop Diamond Tiara. There had to have been a dozen Nightmare Moons all across town. The copies fought and distracted the many different monsters of the town's residents as they fled in different directions. Rainbow Dash would have likely stayed there, if only to count all the Nightmare Moons she saw. But the crying and fussing fillies she was carrying reminded her of what she had to do. She would take Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara to safety, but only after she little twilight what was going on. Hurry, Rarity! We gotta get these here patients out of the clinic! I'm doing my best to hurry, Applejack, Rarity replied. But we can't forget the medicine they need. Much like the unplanned sleepover the pair had at Twilight's, Applejack's and Rarity's conflicting personalities were surfacing. Initially, the two had worked together flawlessly. Applejack had gotten straight to the important task of helping Nurse Redheart load the patients into a wagon that she was going to pull with the help of Big Macintosh, who was already hitched to the front. Rarity on the other hoof had her eye on more detail to gather any and all medical supplies they would need to take care and make sure the patients didn't get any worse once they reached the castle. Each had been able to focus on their own, equally important tasks. Now, however, when time was running short, tensions were beginning to flare. Girl, get that flank of yours in gear, Applejack shouted. She had just helped the last patient, a pony with a busted up leg, into the wagon and was now waiting for Rarity to finish getting the last of the medical supplies. I don't know how long before them monsters. Applejack turned her head to the side abruptly, a loud crash drawing her attention. For a moment it seemed like the sound hadn't come from anywhere, but as Applejack listened, another crash reached her ears. The second crash was followed a moment later by something bursting through the wall of a nearby shop, charging across the empty street and slamming into the buildings on their side. Horse apples! Applejack cursed, seeing that the thing that had just been through the wall was a Cerberus. Big Mac, start pulling the cart! Yep, was all her older brother said before putting his back into the weight and on the hitch. The cart budged and began to roll down the street, but it moved painfully slow. Rarity came galloping out of the hospital just in the nick of time, and she jumped into the cart as it began to roll away. I thought you were going to wait! Rarity half whined. She had set down the medical supplies she'd been fetching and looked over the edge of the cart so she could glare at Applejack, who was trotting alongside. We were, but that was before a Cerberus came barreling through the side of a building. A Cerberus? Rarity gasped. Looking back to see the three-headed dog, only for another gasp to escape her throat. What? What is it? Did we forget some pony? Applejack asked, turning to look at the Cerberus. That was when she noticed the Cerberus hadn't been barreling through the side of a building because it felt like it. The beast had been fighting with something that had tackled it through the building before slamming it down with a bone-shattering force against a wall on the far side of the street. It was the same something that now lay limply on the ground. It looked awfully familiar. What the hay is not Mare Moon doing here? Rarity moved to the edge of the wagon, preparing to jump down. I don't know, Applejack, but we have to help her. Help her? Why exactly would help her? Applejack half shouted as she skated to a stop. Rarity jumped from the cart, and after a graceful landing, she trod over beside Applejack. Because. She began to use her magic to gather some banners from nearby businesses. She needs our help. Or perhaps you'd like to tell Twilight that we let Nyx just get eaten? Rarity's sentence became punctuated with a small magical pop as she transfigured the banners into a strong, sturdy length of rope. Applejack opened her mouth to protest, but after a few moments she cursed and stomped her hoof. Ah, ah, shoot, you're right. Still, I'll be the one doing the helping. You go with Nurse Redheart and make sure them injured and sick ponies to the castle safely. I'll do my best to help out here. You promise you'll be okay? Rarity asked. Take it from the element of honesty. No overgrown mutt's gonna get the better of this rodeo pony. Besides, they need you more than I do. Rarity nodded and set the rope on the ground beside Applejack. All right, but do be careful. I will, Rarity replied. 
She watched Rarity catch up to the cart before looking back down the street at Cerberus. She lifted a hoof with her head and gave her hat a gentle tap to make sure it was secure before she tied the rope Rarity had made around her tail. Once it was ready, Applejack took a moment to focus herself. She took a single deep breath and released it before galloping down the street. As she ran, she began working to spin her tail, forming her lasso into a perfect circle in the air above her. Nightmare Moon was lying limply on the ground next to the wall she had been smashed against. The Cerberus was just about to dig into the first pony meal it had ever gotten the chance to enjoy. Its center head reached out, fangs dripping with saliva. Applejack didn't let the monster get the taste. She tossed her lasso, and the loop of the rope soared around the center head's muzzle. Applejack then stopped, took the rope in her teeth, and pulled, causing the lasso's loop to shrink. The rope forced the Cerberus's mouth shut, and before the beast could properly react, Applejack pulled hard on the rope, turning the beast away from Nightmare Moon. With she and the Cerberus now facing one another, Applejack resumed her galloping charge while keeping a rope in her teeth. The Cerberus also charged, its attention now fully focused on the pony who dared to attack it. The center head of the beast still had its jaw shut tight by the lasso, but the creature's other two heads were more than willing to bite down on Applejack if given the chance. Applejack wasn't about to give the monster the opportunity. When the Cerberus was close enough, Applejack leapt through the air. The timing of the jump allowed her to put her momentum to good use. She landed on top of the Cerberus's center muzzle and jumped off it like it was a springboard. The second jump allowed her to land on the creature's back, where Applejack proceeded to spin around and bite hard down on the rope. She then pulled, drawing the rope taut and using it to keep herself on the monster. Come on, little doggy. Let's see how you do against a rodeo mare. Applejack grunted out, around the rope in her teeth, and Cerberus was more than willing to put her to the test. It began to buck like a rodeo bull, trying its best to dislodge the pony who was standing on its back. It was a fight the Cerberus was destined to win. While it bucked and tossed for several seconds, the Cerberus's center head struggled against the rope in its muzzle. The rope held for a time, but eventually the strain proved too much and it snapped. With the lasso broken, Applejack lost the one thing she had keeping herself anchored to the monster. The next time it bucked, she was thrown several feet upward. She tumbled head over hoof through the air like a rag doll, catching glimpses of the sky and the ground below. She flailed her legs and, with enough effort, was able to right herself just as she began to fall back towards the ground. She looked down to plan her landing, only for a fresh panic to rise in her chest. The Cerberus appeared to be smiling as it positioned itself beneath Applejack. It opened its jaw and began waiting patiently for the meal that was about to be dropped right into its waiting tongue. However, in fighting Applejack, the Cerberus had forgotten about the opponent it had been contending with earlier. Nightmare Moon charged down the street and threw herself into the Cerberus's gut, like a hoofball linebacker. The three-headed beast stumbled, whining from being hit in the stomach and having the air knocked from its lungs. Nightmare Moon, however, didn't continue her assault. Instead, she looked up and, with very careful positioning, she caught Applejack on her back. Are you okay? Nightmare Moon asked. I... I reckon I am. She replied as she tried to stand up on Nightmare Moon's back. Applejack, however, put her hoof on a tender spot, causing Nightmare Moon to wince and grit her teeth. But it looks like you aren't, Applejack added. She jumped down to the ground so she wouldn't hurt Nightmare Moon anymore. It's nothing. Just a bruised rib. Bruised rib? Now wait an apple-picking minute. I thought you were like the princesses. And aren't you a myrtle? We're immortal because of the magic inside of us. But right now I've split myself. And my magic amongst a number of copies. Beach is still fairly powerful. But with my magic divided as it is, I'm much more vulnerable. I guess that makes about as much sense as anything else. How many copies have you made of yourself? A few dozen. Enough to distract and fight most of these monsters and buy enough time for Sephora to escape. Nightmare Moon replied. She watched the Cerberus recovered from being uh, tackled in the gut. I've got a few monsters to flee back to the Everfree Forest, but there are still many left. How do we get rid of them? They're here because they realize Celestia's gone, and they thought they could make an easy meal out of the ponies in Ponyville. We need to show them otherwise. I get you. 
We put up too much of a fight, and they start figuring we ain't worth the trouble. Applejack said, tapping the top of her hat to make sure it was secured. Well, how much more punishment you think this here Cerberus can take before it turns tail? Not much. But this bruised rib is making it hard for me to breathe. Nightmare Moon admitted. These Cerberi aren't anything like their mother, the guardian of Tartarus. Still, even if they are pups, they put up a good fight. Applejack smiled, gathering up what remained of her rope and tied it into a fresh lasso. Well, don't you worry. The two of us together will whip this dog back to the hills. One of Nightmare Moon's clones blanked. Staying aloft as she looked over the monster-ravaged Ponyville, the evacuation was continuing slowly. A lot of ponies had gotten out and to the castle, but there were a lot who needed help. The monsters had spread out across town, leaving pockets of ponies trapped or fleeing for their lives. So far, no pony had been hurt. Twilight and her friends were managing to lead the pockets of ponies to safety, but only while the small army of Nightmare Moons kept fighting the monsters, sending them back to the Riffrey Forest or distracting the beasts long enough for the ponies in danger to escape. The Nightmare Moon in the sky had taken up the duty of scouting, keeping a constant eye on what was happening. The clones didn't share a constant mental link. But with a bit of magic, the scout in the sky could shout messages to the Nightmare Moons on the ground, telling them of ponies in imminent danger. Banking again, Nightmare Moon searched the streets for any brightly colored spots. The natural coloring of ponies was very easy to spot against the simple streets of the town. One splotch of color drew her attention. It was bright pink, and standing in the very center of an intersection, with a lupus minor creeping up from it behind. It was Pinkie Pie, and she hadn't noticed what she was about to be attacked. With no time to alert any other clones, the Nightmare Moon in the sky tucked its wings in and went to a dive, rushing to save Pinkie Pie herself. The Constellation Wolf, however, was very close, and even as Nightmare Moon dropped out of the skyline, like a stone, the wolf jumped, launching itself at Pinkie Pie. It bit down, and Nightmare Moon expected to hear Pinkie Pie's screams of pain. Instead, Pinkie Pie burst apart in an explosion of confetti and streamers. The first explosion was then followed by a second, which filled the intersection with a green cloud of smoke. Putting her wings wide, Nightmare Moon managed to slow her descent and land just outside the cloud. Then, after planting her hooves firmly on the ground, she just beat her wings. The burst of air she produced carried the cloud away, allowing her to see what was remaining of the strange double explosion. The lupus miner was passed out on the ground, fast asleep. What Nightmare Moon had believed was Pinkie Pie was actually one of the training dummies from the castle guard's room. Stepping forward, Nightmare Moon gently nudged what remained of the fake fabric pony. It was during an investigation that the strange doppelganger that she felt the street beneath her hooves shift. She stepped to the side and was surprised to see part of the street lift up. It was Pinkie Pie, the real one this time. She had been hiding in a low hole while wearing some fake dirt and stones. It was a perfect disguise. So perfect, in fact, that Nightmare Moon hadn't even realized she was standing on top of a pony. Ah, I only got one that time, Pinkie Pie said in a, like a fisher mare complaining about the size of her catch. Nightmare Moon blinked a few times, her brain having some difficulty understanding what was going on. Pinkie Pie. Yeah, Peroni, she replied happily. What is this? A distraction. Pinkie Pie answered proudly. When Twyla was giving every pony something to do, I asked what I could do, but she wasn't sure at first. But then she thought of something and told me about all these training dummies she saw in your castle. So she said I could make some surprises for the monsters because I have a special talent for being a distraction and making distractions. But isn't that just silly? Pinkie Pie continued with a giggle. I mean, my special talents throw in amazing parties, not being a distraction. Still, these meanie mean monsters don't deserve a party, so I decided to try what Twilight suggested. I ran and got some of these fake ponies and filled them with my patented confetti and streamer surprise. Then Rainbow Dash said I could make the fake ponies a prank and fill them with some sleeping gas from the joke shop. Pinkie Pie began picking up pieces of the dummy, and I was like, whoa, that's such a great idea. So I did it. I've been leaving my special surprise ponies all over town to distract the monsters. Now, whenever any of those nasty monsters bite down on one of my surprise ponies, they get confetti, streamers, and sleeping gas. 
Do you need any help? Nitro Moon hesitantly asked. Nope, I got this. But just so you know, you can tell my fake ponies from the real ones by their flanks. None of my surprise ponies have cutie marks. That and the made of fabric, but that's kind of hard to see from a distance. Those dummies are real lifelike. Nightmare Moon couldn't help from laughing a little. Well, keep up the good work then. You too, Queen Nixie. Think if I chirp before running down the street with the remains of the exploded dummy. It was a sight that made Nightmare Moon just shake her head and smile. She took flight and, once she was back in the air, read the word to the other clones, telling them about the Pinkie Pie decoys. After that, whenever any of the clones saw a green cloud of smoke and confetti shoot up from Ponyville streets, they would crack a smile. Yes, the world could be ending, but Pinkie Pie would still be. Shirley's muscles and lungs were burning as she started to reach the end of her endurance. When the monster's attack started, she had come across a Scorpio entering a park. While her first instinct had been to run in the opposite direction, she soon noticed the monster had seen some of her students. The Phillies and Colts were playing in the park, and were unaware of the looming danger. Thus, her love for children rose to full force, and cheerily galloped to the park and jumped right into the path of the Scorpio. She hopped around, waved her hooves, and probably made herself look partially demented, but had done the trick. She distracted the orange-colored constellation monster, drawing its attention away from the children and to her. Shirley then ran, and for a while had managed to stay ahead of her hungry pursuer. Panting heavily, Shirley rounded a corner and glanced back. It was, however, a poor time for her to look over her shoulder. On the street ahead, a vegetable cart had been overturned, and its contents were spread across the street. Shirley's hoof landed on top of a carrot, and with a yelp, she rolled her ankle and toppled forward. Shirley hit the ground hard, and the impact knocked the wind from her lungs. It made her vision swim. Knowing what was pursuing her, she forced herself back to her hooves, and attempted to continue fleeing. She, however, winced the moment she put weight down on her front right leg. She had sprained her ankle badly, and, despite the adrenaline in her system, it hurt too much to put any real weight on the injured point. Looking back, Shirley saw the Scorpio around the corner, the arachnid constellation beast snapping one of its pony-sized claws threateningly. It advanced down the street, approaching Cheerily as the school teacher backed up, limping each time she was forced to put weight on her sprained ankle. Unable to escape, she could only watch as the Scorpio drew closer, looming over her as it opened one of its terrible pincers. Cheerily could only shut her eyes, swallowing nervously as she murmured a small prayer, hoping that if she was going to die for protecting the children, at least it would be over quickly. Cheerily's eyes snapped open, and her vision was filled with black, swirling indigo and stars. She backed up a few steps, and not a little gasp escaped her throat when she realized Nightmare Moon was being held in the Scorpio's pincer, a pincer that should have been squeezing down on her own body. Nightmare Moon grunted, kicked her legs, and flapped her wings as she struggled to free herself. The Scorpio was bewildered for a moment to find such a large pony in its grip, but then its mouth began to clatter eagerly. It drew Nightmare Moon close, preparing to take its first bite from her. Not eager to be eaten twice in one day, Nightmare Moon caught on her magic. With a sharp snap, a small bolt of lightning struck the creature where its pincer joined its arm. The joint sizzled and turned black under the strike, and the Scorpio dropped Nightmare Moon with a pain-filled hiss before retreating back a few steps. Nightmare Moon managed to twist herself around in the air, enough to land on her hooves, and, with her horn glowing, she grabbed hold of the Scorpio's tail. She lifted the insect constellation beast into the air and began to swirl it around in a circle. Round and round she stung the Scorpio, building up momentum before releasing her hold on the beast. It flew through the air in a high arc, like a well-thrown Olympic hammer. It flew clear of Ponyville and eventually crashed back inside the distant Everfree Forest, scaring a number of birds from the trees. Don't you ever try to lay a claw on my teacher ever again. Nightmare Moon barked at the beast, even though it was far out of earshot. She then fell to her knees, panting heavily as a few tremors ran through her body, signs that she was becoming acquainted with her latest injuries. Cheerily moved up beside Nightmare Moon, the moment she dropped to her knees. 
She opened her mouth to ask if Nightmare Moon was all right, only to be interrupted by a similar question. Are... are you okay, Miss Cheerily? Nightmare Moon asked. Yes, I am. Thank you, she replied, though her voice was shaky, not from facing Nightmare Moon, but from how she was acting. The Queen Cheerily knew was a monster, and that was all the old story said. But a monster wouldn't have saved her from a Scorpio like that, or asked if she was okay while ignoring her own injuries. Good. I'm glad I got here in time, then, Nightmare Moon said before taking a deep breath. She then grunted, grit her teeth, and forced herself back to her hooves. She stumbled a few times, and would have fallen over if Shirley hadn't rushed to her side and lent her a little support that she could. Night, I mean Nix, you're hurt. Cheerily said. We need to get you to Nurse Redheart, and... There's no time, Nightmare Moon replied, just as she finally managed to stand on her own four hooves. There. There are the monsters that I must take care of first. I need to make sure that you get to the castle. But... I'll be okay, Miss Cheerily. I promise. Almost every pony has made it to my castle, and the monsters have started to flee back to the Everfree Forest. The ones that I haven't tossed back out myself. Nightmare Moon assured her. It will be okay, but I cannot rest yet. Now you can't run anywhere with that ankle. I'll fly you to the castle, but then I have to go back out and help clear out the rest of the monsters. With that, Nightmare Moon's horn glowed, and she lifted Cheerily onto her back. But Cheerily obviously didn't like the thought of Nightmare Moon doing anything in her injured condition. She didn't protest. She instead just gave a thankful smile and a nod and did her best to stay balanced on Nightmare Moon's back as she spread her wings and took flight. Nightmare Moon leaned on a nearby building, closing her eyes as she took a moment to rest. The fight for Ponyville was still being waged, and while the other clones of her continued to fight, this one copy needed a moment to rest. She had just beaten a Cerberus back to the Everfree Forest, but the fight hadn't been one-sided. It had taken a lot of force to back that one Cerberus, and if not for the building she was leaning on, Nightmare Moon would have been too weak to even stand on her own hooves. And if a predator is good at anything, it's sensing when its prey is weak. A low growl caused Nightmare Moon to open her eyes. She saw that she was surrounded by a trio of lupus miners. Nightmare Moon strained, trying to find the strength to face these new enemies. But she couldn't. She was too tired needed more time to rest, though it was the time the lupus miners weren't going to allow her. Shutting her eyes again, Nightmare Moon hung her head. She had learned during her imprisonment and time impersonating a troop of soldiers. Now by cloning herself, she made herself weaker. But she also had learned that injuries the clones received didn't just go away. Each wound would have an effect on her real body when she made herself whole again, so the effects would be dulled. Minor injuries to a clone would become minor injuries for her real body. But if a clone died, Nightmare Moon feared that she would do to her once she made herself whole again. She would be the first clone to fall, but that was okay. She guessed she, as a whole, could survive if a few clones were lost. Though it would put her in pretty bad shape when she became a single mare again. Still, if losing those clones meant protecting more ponies... Then it was worth it in the end. Yes, losing one clone would be all right. She could stand losing one. The lupus miners seemed to sense Nightmare Moon's surrender. One licked his chops while the others sneered an inch closer. Their muscles began to tense while they were preparing to pounce on their injured prey. Don't. You. Dare. Nightmare Moon's eyes snapped open turning her head to the sound of the voice. It was a voice that was strong, firm, and commanding, but it was one she knew. It was a voice that was normally soft and gentle. It belonged to the most compassionate and gentle pony in Equestria. It was Fluttershy's voice. She was standing between the Lupus Miners and Nightmare Moon, and she was furious. I don't care how many of you there are. I don't care how big your fangs are or how sharp your claws are. I will not, I repeat, will not hurt her. You got that? 
The lupus miners took an anxious step back, glancing between each other. One of the three wolves, however, found courage to face Fluttershy. It started to inch towards her and it growled. Fluttershy, however, was unfazed. She turned her gaze upon the wolf and opened her eyes wide. The orbs became as hard and cold as steel. The wolf froze up immediately, rigid as stone. It was the stare, and Fluttershy wasn't holding back. Now, Fluttershy began as she stepped towards the wolf that had dared to approach her until barely an inch separated her nose from its own. You are going to take your two friends here, go back to the Riffy Forest, and I never want to see you in Ponyville again. The lupus miner wilted, whimpered, and glanced over at the other two constellation wolves who offered no support. Well, what are you waiting for? Shoo! With that simple word, the three constellation wolves bolted and ran back towards the Everfree Forest with their tails between their legs. Fluttershy kept her hardened gaze fixed on the wolves until they were several blocks away, before she softened and allowed herself to return to her usual caring nature. You didn't have to do that, Nightmoon grunted out as Fluttershy turned around. And you didn't have to help us fight against the monsters, Fluttershy replied with a gentle smile. She took flight and hovered in the air near Nightmare Moon's head. But you did, and because of you, a lot of ponies are safe. I'm really proud of you, Nix. Nightmare Moon looked away from Fluttershy, instead focusing on the ground. Hasn't Twilight told you? I don't like being called Nix. Really? Fluttershy asked. She calls you that all the time. Nightmare Moon refused to meet Fluttershy's gaze for a time but eventually she could stop herself from looking up. Does she? Even after everything that I've done and how I treated her, Twilight still calls me Nyx? Fluttershy nodded. She still thinks of you as her Nyx. She thinks that, deep down, you're not a bad pony. And I'm starting to agree with her. You're not a bad pony, Nyx. You've just made some bad decisions. Bad decisions. Now that's the understatement of the millennia. Nightmare Moon grunted. She groaned and struggled to ease her weight off the wall she'd been leaning against. Her first try failed, but on the second, Nightmare Moon managed to stand without aid. Only then did she look back at Fluttershy. Answer me this. How many bad decisions can a pony make before she is a bad pony? It doesn't matter how many. If a pony's willing to apologize or do what's right to fix her mistakes, then she's never a bad pony. You're a good pony, Nix. And do you want to know why? Why? Because only a good pony would have come out here and faced down an army of monsters to protect a pony she cares about. You are kind as always, Fluttershy. The kindest pony in Equestria. This time, however, you're being too kind. But I appreciate your words, nevertheless. Nightmare Moon said before sucking in a deep breath and spreading her wings. Now... I cannot ask you to keep the monsters away as I rest. I will retreat to the town square for now, and when my strength has returned, I will fly out again. There aren't that many monsters left, Nix. You should just rest and let us handle it. I cannot, and I will not, let you put yourselves in danger fixing my mistake. This monster attack is my fault, and I will do whatever I must to set it right. Once I've caught my breath. Nightmare Moon took flight with those final words and Fluttershy watched her join a few other clones before heading towards the center of town. Fluttershy let out a sigh and shook her head. Oh, Nix. The monster attack was finally drawing to a close as noon rolled around. All the ponies in Ponyville had been evacuated. The last few stragglers had been cleared out an hour before. The only ponies who remained were Twilight and her friends, who were staying behind to help as many Nightmare Moons fight off the remaining monsters. And at ten minutes past noon, the last Hydra was chased out of town. The forehead monstrosity was running back to the forest like a crying baby, leaving in its wake a trio of Nightmare Moons who hovered in the air alongside Rainbow Dash. Yeah, you better run! Rainbow Dash called out before she snickered to herself, and looked back at the three copies of Nightmare Moon, all of who looked significantly worse for wear than her. Come on, 
Let's go meet up with all the others and back at the town hall. The Nightmare Moons nodded and banked to follow Rainbow Dash on the right, flight back to the town center. There, just outside the town hall, a small army of Nightmare Moons had gathered. Three clones flew to join the crowd while Rainbow Dash landed by her friends, who were on the veranda just outside the front of the door. Last Hydra sent packin', Dash proclaimed proudly. Good, Twilight stated with a nod before placing a check mark on a piece of paper. That should be all the monsters. Still, Rainbow Dash, I want you and Fluttershy to sweep through the town to make sure everything's clear. I don't want to bring any ponies back here till we're sure that all things are gone. What about us, Sugar Cube? Applejack asked. You take Rarys, Cora, and Pinkie Pie and head to the castle. Tell every pony there that we think all the monsters are gone, and that it should be safe to come back fairly soon. And what about you? I'll stay here till Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash have finished sweeping the town, and then I'll meet you at the castle with them and Nyx. Twilight assured as she stepped away from the table, which had been her command center throughout the long morning. All of her friends nodded, and each quickly headed off to their assigned tasks while Twilight moved towards the crowd of Nightmare Moon Clones. Are there any monsters left? The closest of the clones asked. No, I think we got them all. You can pull yourselves back together now. All the Nightmare Moons nodded, and each turned into an indigo cloud before all the clouds gathered together into a single mass just a few feet in front of Twilight. It only took a moment for the single cloud to materialize into Nightmare Moon. A moment later, she collapsed to the ground with a painful whine. Nix! Twilight yelled before quickly rushing to her side. Are you okay? Nightmare Moon coughed and struggled to pull herself off the ground. I'm fine. It's just when my copies came back together, all the injuries my clones received are now affecting me. All the injuries? Twilight exclaimed, and Nightmare Moon just nodded before pulling herself off the ground. Even now, every injury she had endured was clearly visible to Twilight. It made her lift a hoof to her mouth in shock. Nightmare Moon's body was littered with cuts. She wasn't able to put weight on her front right leg, and one of her wings hung limply at her side. To stop it all off, Nightmare Moon's breathing was labored, as if every breath caused pain to shoot through her body. We've got to get you to Nurse Redheart right away, Twilight said firmly. Nightmare Moon took a few ginger steps away from Twilight. No, I'll be fine. You'll need, <clears throat> need me here, in case there are more monsters. No. I'm sure we got them all. You should get to the castle and lie down before you... Twilight! The shout drew Twilight's attention skyward. She saw Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy flying towards her in a rush. What is it? She called up to them. There's one left. A lupus. It's way bigger than the others. Rainbow Dash shouted while waving her hooves above her head. Where is it? It's coming this way. Fluttershy answered while pointing a hoof. Twilight turned her head in the direction Fluttershy was pointing, and felt the blood in her veins turn to ice. Charting down the streets towards her and Nightmare Moon was a lupus. But it was not a lupus minor. No, this was a full-grown lupus major, a constellation wolf as large as Nightmare Moon and four times as ferocious as the smaller young lupus miners that had been terrorizing Ponyville. The beast barreled towards them like a runaway locomotive, closing several blocks distance as a speed that rivaled even Rainbow Dash's. The two pegasi in the air were shouting for Twilight and Nightmare Moon to get out of the way, and Twilight couldn't deny her first instinct was to run. Then Twilight glanced over at Nightmare Moon. She was barely able to stand and probably couldn't fly. There was no way she could get away, and Twilight wasn't going to leave Nightmare Moon alone with the wolf. She wasn't going to abandon her again. Unwilling to leave, Twilight furrowed her eyebrows and put herself directly in front of Nightmare Moon. She lowered herself down and began to call upon her magic in preparation for a fight. She was, after all, a unicorn that had handled an Ursa Minor, and the Lupus Major, while more ferocious, was a lot smaller. The Lupus Major was almost on her, but Twilight was ready. She waited for the creature to leap up. Then she'd catch it in her levitation magic and throw it back down the street. It wasn't easy to levitate things so big, but she knew she could do it. She wouldn't let an overgrown wolf lay a paw on her daughter. Twilight grit her teeth as the lupus got close enough to pounce, 
and the constellation wolf threw itself into the air with a grand arcing lunge. It was bearing its fangs, and its claws were extended, ready to grab hold of Twilight and tear the flesh out of her. Twilight was just about to unleash her spell when a cloud of indigo shot past her, snapping like the wolf and knocking it back several feet. Get out of here! Nightmare Moon ordered Twilight. I'll handle this! No, I'm not! This isn't a discussion! Nightmare Moon bellowed as her mare flared. Before Twilight could shout another protest, the mare had lashed out and encased Twilight as well as Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. Nightmare Moon's eyes glowed white, and three bright, bright flashes emanated from inside her mane. She sent the three mares to safety. They were gone, and as Nightmare Moon panted from the exertion of magic, she turned her attention to the lupus miner, which was now slowly walking towards her with murderous intent in its eyes. As she Twilight blinked, shook her head, and tried to grasp what had just happened. One moment she saw Nightmare Moon getting attacked, but then her vision had been blocked with Nightmare Moon's mane. The next moment, Twilight was looking out over Ponyville. Where? What? Twilight stammered as she looked around. She, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy were at Nightmare Moon's castle, standing atop the gatehouse. The gallows that Twilight had almost been hung from had been removed, torn straight from the wall, giving Twilight a clear view of Ponyville below. Dash recovered from the teleportation spell and jumped into a hover. How the hey did we get here? Ah, it was Nyx. She must have teleported us away from the fight, Twilight shouted. She lifted her four hooves and placed them on the gatehouse's battlements, so she could get balance on her back legs and look into Ponyville. But, Twilight, doesn't that mean she's still... Fluttershy's question was interrupted by a loud crash that drew the mare's attention, and made them look in the direction of the town. From their position on top of the gatehouse, they could see glimpses of Nightmare Moon as she fought with the Lupus Major in the center of Ponyville. She was standing away from the wolf and was on her hooves, but her movements made it apparent she was injured, tired, and at a massive disadvantage. What is she thinking? She's gonna get herself killed! Twilight shouted. We have to get down there and help her! Twilight, if you go down there now, you're just gonna get yourself killed! Rainbow Dash told her. Nightmare Moon can handle it! She's hurt, Rainbow! Badly! If we don't help... Twilight's protest was silenced when she felt a wave of magic wash over her. She looked towards Ponyville and could not see Nightmare Moon or the Lupus Major everywhere. There was, however, something Twilight could see. From between a few buildings, Nightmare Moon's swirling mane began to rise up into the air above the town. It went several stories up before it formed a threatening cloud, a cloud that soon began to crackle with energy. The energy, that magic, built up quickly, and then its power was unleashed. A single thick burst of lightning arced down, cutting through the air and caused a thunderclap that could not only be heard, but also felt by all the ponies hiding in the castle. The lightning strike drew up a dark cloud of smoke where it struck, obscuring much of Ponyville. Twilight strained her eyes to see what had happened, but it was impossible. She wanted to race down there and make sure Nightmare Moon was alright, but fear had rooted her hooves in place. What if she was attacked by the Lupus Major? What if she found Nightmare Moon dead? For several minutes, Twilight could only watch Ponyville with Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy by her side. The dust had been thrown up, was beginning to drift in the wind. The dark cloud the Nightmare Moon's mane fizzled and disappeared as well. The first sign of life came from the Opus Major. Twilight only saw glimpses of it at first, but she was able to see that it was running away from Ponyville. It was also limping, but the bee still managed to impressively pace the price, despite its injury. It raced all the way to the edge of the Free Forest, and there it paused looking back at Ponyville and kicked some dirt in the town's direction before disappearing back to the forest. The next sign of life came a few minutes later, which felt like a tremendous amount of time for Twilight. It was Dash who saw it first, and she quickly called out and drew Twilight's attention to the other part of town. There, a black figure had just rounded a corner and was slowly limping up the road to the castle. She moved agonizingly slowly and looked to be in a lot of pain, but she was there, she was alive. Twilight didn't waste a single moment and broke into a gallop. She ran down the steps that connected the top of the gatehouse to the courtyard below. She began pushing through the tightly packed crowd of ponies who had hidden in the castle's safe embrace 
during the attack. It took a few minutes for Twilight to push her way through, but after passing through the final groups, she was free of the cloud and running through the castle gates. However, just as she got outside, she slid to a stop as her eyes grew wide. Nightmare Moon was just a few yards away, and still continuing her slow limp towards the castle gates. To Twilight, it looked like Nightmare Moon was on the verge of collapse. She winced with each step. Each breath was labored, and her injured wing dragged on the ground beside her. The lupus major had left her with several fresh wounds, though they were almost lost among her prior injuries. The armor Nightmare Moon had worn was torn to shreds. There were deep claw marks in several places, including one across the eye of her helmet. Her makeup was also gone, sweated and rubbed off thanks to the stain of battle. Even Nightmare Moon's mane seemed injured. The usual full-flowing star-speckled mass of indigo was pale, sickly, and came off of Nightmare Moon, not in a constant cloud, but as thin trails and wisps. What did you do? For a moment, Nightmare Moon chose to ignore Twilight, and just continued to limp towards the castle. It was not of rudeness, but from the fact that she was finding it hard to breathe. Once she'd gotten a little closer, Nightmare Moon stopped, gasped a few times, and then was able to find her voice. I... I couldn't let it hurt... let you... attack the lupus. It might have hurt you. I was... fighting it. But it pinned me to the ground. I couldn't make the lupus let go. So, I shocked both of us with a lightning bolt. But why would you do that? Why did you teleport me away? I told you I could handle it. Because I didn't want to see you. I didn't want to see any pony get hurt. I... I can't bear the pain. It's better for me to be hurt, if it means that I can protect the ponies I care about. Nightmare Moon grunted as she brought herself through the castle gates. She limped into the courtyard where the entire populace was watching. The ponies made a wide path for her, much like they did when she had passed amongst them before. Only this time, they, some, only some stepped aside because of fear. The rest stepped back in respect. With her slow steps, Nightmare Moon finally reached the center of the castle's front courtyard. There, she stopped to catch her breath. She wavered and tilted like she was about to fall. But then she took in a deep breath and looked out across the sea of ponies. Every pony. They were all safe. She'd managed to protect them all. And she almost thought they were looking at her with concern, instead of fear and loathing. But then again, she was feeling rather lightheaded. Still, that didn't matter. She had done it. She'd kept them safe. The... The creatures of the Every Forest have been driven back. Ponyville is safe. And you may return to your home. Nitro Moon called out, trying to give her voice strength. She then took another step with the intention of going back into the castle. She, however, didn't make it more than five steps for her hoof caught on an uneven stone. Nightmare Moon fell and hit the ground hard. Audible gasps cascaded across the courtyard at the sight of the once greatly feared Olicorn falling over and lying motionless on the ground. Still, none of them moved to help her. All they could do was glance anxiously amongst each other, unsure whether to help or not. The only one that didn't hold back was Twilight. She was at Nightmare Moon's side almost instantly, looking over her in panic. Nix! Nix! Wake up! Twilight shouted. She put her head down beside Nightmare Moon's mouth. She was unconscious, but she was still breathing. But her breathing was weak. Twilight began to hyperventilate, nudging Nightmare Moon's head. Nightmare Moon, however, didn't rise, and her breathing was only growing weaker. Twilight stepped back quickly and began calling on her magic. Don't you worry, Nix. I'll get you inside and get you patched up. Yeah, I'll carry you inside and get you bandaged. It'll be just like when I found you in the forest, and you'll be okay, just like you were then. Twilight found concentrating difficult. The exhaustion of the long day and the stress of her own emotions were making it hard to focus on her magic. Still, she managed to lift Nightmare Moon and hold her a few feet above the ground in a levitation spell. Twilight then turned, the crowd watching her, noticing some of them were frozen in shock. 
Quick! Some pony, get a first aid kit or something. She needs help. Despite Twilight's call for help, no pony moved. They just stood there, watching with mixed emotions. Some of them couldn't bear to look Twilight in the eyes. Others were confused and surprised. Some even looked on in anger and disbelief, as if she was doing something wrong. All this drew angry tears to Twilight's eyes, as she glared at the crowd of ponies. What are you doing? Twilight screamed at the crowd, making a number of them step back anxiously. She needs help! She's hurt! And she got hurt protecting us! I know... I know you're scared of her, but she needs help! Twilight grew hysterical, and desperation entered her voice. Please. Please. We can't let her... Please. I need help. I can't... I can't help her by myself. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a nurse. I need help. She needs help. Please! At this point, Twyla was crying, openly. Her, her begging eyes searching for some pony. Any pony that was willing to help her. Those nearby, however, turned away. Unwilling or unable to meet her gaze. The gaze of a mother who was terrified she was about to lose her daughter. You... You monsters! She just saved you! Saved your children? Why won't you help? Before Twilight could snap or break down, she felt a hoof on her shoulder. Don't worry, Twilight. We're here. Twilight snapped her head around and smiled through the panicked tears on her face. Floating in the air beside her was Fluttershy, and she was offering a very gentle and reassuring smile. Behind her were other ponies willing to help. They had been behind her the entire time, always willing to help. Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Applejack, Pinkie Pie, Zakora, and other ponies had stepped out from the crowd. Nurse Redheart stood with saddlebags laden with medical supplies, and Cheerily was beside the others carrying a first aid kit she had been using to tend to ponies with very minor injuries. It took her longer because she wanted to speak with her daughter first, but Ditsy Doo also came up, ignoring her own injured wing. To top it off, even Dr. Stables stepped out from the crowd and offered his expertise. These were only the first. Other ponies started to step out from the crowd. Some Twilight recognized, others she didn't. But it didn't matter at the moment. They were there, willing to help her, to help Nightmare Moon. We need to get her inside and start treating her wounds, Dr. Stable told the growing group of ponies. Twilight, continue to levitate her as gently as you can, and try to keep her as level and still as possible. Rainbow Dash, I need you to go back to the clinic in town. Find your way to the surgery room and open the big blue cabinet. Inside will be a large black bag. I need you to get that for me as quickly as possible. You got it, Rainbow Dash said before quickly zipping off towards Ponyville. Dr. Stable nodded and looked every pony else. The rest of you clear a path. We need to get her inside, now. The ponies nodded and went to work quickly. Most ran ahead and cleared the path to the castle doors. Others began doing anything and everything Dr. Stable needed. All the while, Twilight waited for her cue to move Nightmare Moon inside. And as she waited, she drew Nightmare Moon close. Twilight then leaned in and gently nuzzled Nightmare Moon's cheek. You're going to be all right, Twilight assured her. I promise. 